Okay, welcome to part two of the first lesson. So, let's look at how we can actually connect a network together. So, by the end of this lesson, you would be you should be able to discuss advantages and disadvantages of both wired and wireless networking, and describe the purpose of an NIC, a network interface card. So, imagine a scenario: you bought a new house, you want to install a network to connect all the computer together. Do you break up the toolkit? Okay, so do you suddenly start drilling holes in walls so that you can run network cable through and connect all your bits of kit together? Yes or no? So if you're doing this in class, you can now have five minutes to prepare your excuse, or a reason, depending on your point of view, and whether you should break out the tools or not. So you go wireless or Wi-Fi. Okay, now you've taken that, let's just go over some of the, the theory, theory about it. Wire networks, this is when the device and the network are connected using um, what it might refer to as uh, structured cabling. But basically, Cat5, Cat6 cable looks something like the image in the bottom right here. Various colours. Um, they can be used to connect printers, um, computers, anything that's got a, a, an RJ45 network port in it. Now, they do have pros and cons. If you look at their plus size first, they are they have generally quite fast transfer speeds. You can get gig gigabit Ethernet on um Cat6 net networking cable, which is a thousand megabits per second. Now that is quite fast. The hardware is generally cheaper compared to Wi Fi. A real of network cable will cost next to nothing. A network card is a few pounds. Um, in fact most machines will also have those built built in now. Their main disadvantages, however, is the portability. I mean, if you look at your school, unless you're using a Wi-Fi cap capable laptop or desktop, your machine is pretty much set in stone, depending on where your network points are, and how long the cable is. And um, so even if it was a laptop, if you're plugged into a, a, rou a router, there's nothing much you can do if you've not got a huge length length of cable. So, not very portable. Also, you've got the disadvantage of wires trailing all over the place as well. If you get a new computer, so, say you get an extra laptop, for example, if you've wired it together, there isn't a great deal of room, depending on the equipment, for you to actually add a new bit of kit to it. So, if you've got a house with multiple devices, they were all wired, you might have run out of ports on your switch, you might have run out of physical net network cable, so it's not very scalable or expandable. So if you look at Wi-Fi networks, so odds are the laptop that you're looking at this on, or the tablet, if you're looking at it on one of those, is a Wi-Fi cap 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 capable device. Most, I mean, even your phone can connect to what even if mo most modern phones can connect to Wi-Fi networks now. So it does require some wireless net networking equipment. So if we look at the features of Wi-Fi, you'll notice that pretty much it, the all the disadvantages of Wi-Fi are actually advantages. Uh, sorry, the disadvantages of wired cabling are actually advantages of Wi Wi Wi-Fi. Your devices are very portable. You can move a Wi-Fi capable laptop, tablet, device, all about, as long as you can get the adequate range. Now, you've got to remember, they don't like dealing with brick walls, etc, etc, so you may not get it in the garden, but you you, you, you may. Um, expandability. You go and get an extra tablet, an extra device, you can add it, as long as you know the um, path, the, the security. As long as you know the security key for the network, you can add multiple devices on. If you've been in a um, restaurant, hotel, etc., etc., you may have ha had access to the company's Wi-Fi ne network, so you can set up a guest access account. That's not really doable with wired networking, unless, again, you happen to have spare ports and such sitting about. But, however, Wi-Fi's main disadvantages can be when you set up a network, you have to ensure you set up a proper encryption key so that even if people do see your networks, you can protect them. 
I mean, you can actually tell a, a, a Wi-Fi network not to broadcast what's called this SSID so that people can't even see your network. You actually need to know the name of it and the password to connect. Now, by default, encryption may be off on a Wi-Fi a router, router, router. So it's perfectly possible that if you do not do this, other people can access your network, for example, outside from outside your house, from next door. That obviously brings up legal issues that if someone else is connected to your network and they download material, who's to blame? Well, more on that later. Now, the transfer speeds internally on Wi-Fi are generally slower than wired. Um, you can get a Wi-Fi router that will send data around a house about 300 megabits approximately per second, which is still quite fast, um, but they're generally slower than um, wired. Now, they also can suffer from signal problems, again, depending on your house, um, the amount of devices, if you happen to live next door to masts, etc., etc. Okay, you can get poor um, connect connection. Now, every device, whether you're using wired or Wi-Fi, will have some form of network interface card or chips built, built into it. This is so that it can actually physically communicate on a network, so it can send and receive traffic. 